رحمه الله تعالى الله تعالى فرجه الشريف عزيز سيد الله الصلوات على محمد وآل محمد Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish prayer, salah, and give zakat will have their reward with their Lord. And there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. In our previous lectures, brothers and sisters, you mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a reason. To test us. And He gave us a goal in which He wants us to reach, which is perfection. So just like we all have goals in our lives, some of us want to become engineers, some of us want to become doctors, some of us want to become professors. 
We have goals in this dunya, in this life. And we hope to accomplish them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a goal to have a successful hereafter. Which is to reach perfection. And of course, if you want to achieve your goal, you can't achieve it without having a base as to where to start. You guys might be wondering, what does this have to do with the ayah I mentioned at the beginning, which talks about salat? The answer is that salat is the key in order to reach that perfection. It is the key to reach the ultimate goal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to reach. It's pretty, it's pretty much the only form of ibadah we perform on a daily basis. That's if we perform it in the first place. One of the main problems we face, especially here in the West, is being able to reach spiritual satisfaction. is to build a spiritual lifestyle and maintain that spiritual. We may be successful in our lives, in our jobs, in our universities, in our, with our, in our families. But when it comes to building our spirituality and maintaining it, the best of us are tested. And the best of us struggle and face some obstacles and challenges. It's very difficult to hold on that spirituality. But we all know we should reach nafsul mutmain that we talked about, the content soul. We must reach a self which has attained spiritual satisfaction. Since if I do not reach nafs al-mutma'inna, I will not be happy in this life. I will not, I will not find satisfaction in this life. So, so saying this, brothers and sisters, where do we get this spiritual satisfaction from? This spiritual satisfaction only comes from Allah. Not from anyone else, not from anything else. The spiritual satisfaction this is what brings us happiness and safety. It doesn't come from money, it doesn't come from wealth, it doesn't come from positions in life, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you see many people in this dunya, they have everything. They have the money, they have the wealth, they have the position, but they don't have that spiritual satisfaction. Actually, you see, most of them they have nothing but depression, <coughs> sadness. And why is that? Because spiritual satisfaction only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from anything else. And Allah says that spiritual satisfaction only comes from Him. That's why we have to keep Allah on our minds at all times. We should work, struggle, strive to have Him on our minds at all times. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Taha, Ayah 14, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa aqim salata li dhikri. Remember me by salat. Worship me. And establish prayer for my remembrance. And yet many of us don't understand the point we pray. It's to remember Allah. Why do we pray every day? Because every time we pray this brings us closer to Allah. This builds a connection with our Lord, with our Creator, with our Master. In other words, it's a direct call between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how we connect with Allah. 
through this wireless connection, if you want to call it, between us and Allah. So I want you to picture this, brothers and sisters. Imagine Islam as a body. And just like a body has body parts with specific and important roles, Salat is the heart. <coughs> just like the heart flows blood to the body, Salat is the connection that flows to Allah. Every Muslim is required to perform Salat. We said the other day, Salat is wajib ayn. What does that mean? That it's an obligation on each and every one of us. Each and every one of us here is required to pray. It's wajib on him to pray. But why is it so important for Allah to make it an obligation on all of us? Inshallah, in today's lecture, we will be covering these points. How was Salah presented to the Prophet? What is the importance of Salat? And how did the Imams look at Salat? And how do we improve our Salat? How can we improve our Salat? So let us begin with Salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, in Islam we have something called Furu al-Din, which are the pillars of Islam. Like zakat, like hajj, amr al-ma'ruf, and nay al-munkar. Tawalli, tabarri. These are pillars of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wanted to deliver these to the Prophet, peace be upon him, he would send the angel Jibra'il to go and deliver it to the Prophet. Jibra'il would teach the Prophet how to perform Hajj, how to perform Zakat, how to perform Amr Ba'aruf and Nahum Mukha. Except for Salat. When it came, when it was the time to reveal Salat and to deliver it to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Jibra'il that now there is something special to deliver. And you cannot deliver it. You cannot handle it. Jibra'il tells Allah, asks Allah, what do you mean? What should I do? He tells him, go bring me my prophet. So go down to earth and bring the prophet to me. And this narration, by the way, is both in Sunni and Shia books how the Salat was presented to the Prophet. <coughs> so Jibra'il goes down to earth and he tells the Prophet that we are going on a journey, a place we haven't been before. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, gets ready and they start the journey from Mecca to Bayt al-Maqdis and from there they ascended to the heavens. First heaven, second heaven, third heaven, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, until they reached the seventh heaven. At that point, Jibra'il told the Prophet, I can't continue. This, this is my checkpoint, I can't go any further. So the Prophet asks Jibra'il, what shall I do now? He tells him, you have to continue the journey alone. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam So Rasulullah continued the journey alone. How far? The Quran mentions in Surah Al-Najm thumma dana fatadalla He came closer and closer. How closer? As close as an arrow is to a bow. What did the Prophet see in that journey? The biggest sign of Allah. He saw the biggest sign of Allah. The biggest ayah of Allah. The 
Prophet saw it there in the seventh heaven. Allah tells Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, this is the prayer I am prescribing to you. Take it and deliver it to your Ummah. The whole journey is to tell them about Salah. Go and deliver it to your Ummah. And yet, when Salat was delivered to us, we don't take it seriously. We neglect to take it seriously. We don't pray on time. We're not consistent in our prayers. We don't pray sometimes. Whenever we feel like it, we pray. And look at the importance of Salat. So this shows us the magnitude of Salat. And that Salat is the biggest sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what is the significance and importance of this Salat? This is the second point we will talk about. And I'm going to talk about it in a few points. Why Salat is important. Number one, it is Afdal al Salat is the best type of worship. The love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the crave to worship Him and being humble to His greatness is the result of knowing Him, of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you know Allah and you recognize He is the creator of every detail in this universe, and the creator of the human being this drives the individual to obeying Allah to following what he wants to obeying Allah through the level of Ubudiyah and we talked about that the other day through the level of a slave looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is your master and you are the slave. Anta al mawla wa ana al abd. Where you consider your Lord as your master. That He owns every moment of your life. And this is the purpose of creating the human being. Bismillah rahman rahim wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa li abudun. To worship. I haven't created the jinn and the human being other than the purpose of worship. <coughs> and this is also the hikmah, the reason for sending the prophets. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنَا عَبُضُ اللَّهِ وَتَجَنَّبُ الطَّاغُوبِ To every nation we sent a messenger who told it's people worship God and stay away from Shaitan. And Salat is the first form of worship in, front, in terms of importance. It is the first form of worship in terms of importance. And in it, Abudiya, slavery is manifested. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أمر إلا ليعبد الله مخلصين له الدين حنفاء ويقيم الصلاة. And they were not commanded except to worship Allah, to being sincere to Him in their religion, inclining to truth and establishing prayers. And giving zakat, and that is the correct religion. So that's point one to why salat is important. Second, salat is amud al din. It is the pillar and fundamental of the deen, of our religion. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, As salat amud al din. Salat is the pillar of Islam. And Amir al-Mu'mineen, Salamullah alayhi says, Usikum bis-salat, allati hiya amud al-deen. 
وقوام الإسلام فلا تخفلوا عنها I advise you to bear in mind that Salat is the pillar of Islam so don't forget about it and take it lightly so our prophets and imams describe Salat as the main pillar of religion just like if you're if you want to build a building for example without the main base or the main structure which are all the pillars you can't build it no matter what why because there is no base and salat is that base in which our hasanat our actions and our good deeds are built upon that's point two point three as salat wasiyatul anbiya Salat is the will of the prophets to the people. It is the most beloved thing to our prophet. As Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He says, salat. The most beloved thing to me is salat. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, al Allah azza wa jal as-salat. وهي آخر وصايا الأنبياء عليهم السلام. So that's point three, the will that the prophets left to their people. Point four, it's أفضل القربان. So what does that mean? Salat is the best form for a human being to get closer to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq as well says in a narration. He was asked for the best method for people to become closer to Allah. And what is the most beloved thing for Allah to see from His people? So the Imam replied, I know nothing after much greatness other than Salah. Don't you see that the obedient slave, Prophet Isa, Jesus, said, Awsani bis salat was zakat ma dumtu hayya? And he has made me blessed wherever I am and enjoined upon me prayer and zakat as long as I remain alive. And also through prayer, the individual becomes as close as he can to Allah. Imam Ridha salam says the closest a human being is to God is while he is performing sujood, prostration, which we talked about yesterday, the importance of sujood is one of the signs of the believers. So that's point four. Point five. It is the first thing that the human being will be asked for on the day of judgment. And our prophets and imams, salamullah alayhim, stress that point. Imam Salik, salamullah alayhi, says, أول ما يحاسب به العبد الصلاة. فإن قبلت قبل سائر عمله وإن ردت رد سائر عمله. The first thing that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is going to ask on the day of judgment is salat. If it if it is accepted, everything else from our amal from our deeds is accepted, and if not, everything else is rejected. You know, there's a lot of people. Who attend the mosque, perform ziyarat, read du'a kumail, you know, give charity, donate money to the mosque. But, you know, they don't take their salat seriously. Or they don't care about their salat or they don't pray. But the imam is telling them, you know, you know what, what you're doing is good and it's mustahab and everything, but if you don't pray, it's worth nothing. If you don't pray, it's worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You know, and one of the most prayers, which unfortunately many of us neglect, Salat Surah. You know, it's reached the point where no, it's all of us 
Well, don't think it's wajib anymore. You know, if, if I wake up, I wake up. If I don't, it's all good. I'll do qada tomorrow. You know, the funny thing is in Shah Ramadan, for example, you know, most Muslims suddenly turn into bats and owls. They have this magic ability to stay up all night, just chilling with their friends, suhoor, and gatherings and stuff. But subhanAllah, before the Adam by 10 minutes, the brother starts becoming sleepy. You know, I'm, I'm going to go take a nap, wake me up for salah. And he passes out. He's, he's, he's not going to wake up again. It happens. It happens a lot. Salat Subah. So important. Brothers and sisters, Salat al-Subah is so important that if you want to know, if you have a close chance of being from the Ansar, being from the soldiers of Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallallah ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, look at how he defines Salat al-Subah. Because if you're not able to leave your blanket and your comfy bed, to go and sit on your prayer mat for two minutes, how do you expect yourself to leave the comfort of your home and the comfort in the comfort of your life to battle with the Imam Salam Allah something to pound your upon. So now we know the importance of Salat. What's next? It's to improve our Salat. It's to make it better. It's to concentrate in our Salat. And of course, brothers and sisters, the concentration will vary from individual to individual. But we must mention here that the perfection <coughs> and concentration achieved by Amir al-Mu'mineen was, com- was the complete perfection for Salat. To a point when Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib prays He's in a different world. He thinks about in whose hands am I standing right now? In the hands of my Creator, in the hands of my Lord, in the hands of my Master. You know, to a point where in the Battle of Safin, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib was hit by an arrow. An arrow head pierced in his thigh. So they come and ask his son, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, you know, when, when, when's the best time to remove the arrow out of your father's thigh? He tells them when he starts his prayers, because he's in a different world. So he won't, he won't feel the pain anymore. This is the highest level. Salah ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Of course we're not going to reach the level of Amir Mu'mineen, salam Allah alayhi, but it's worth a try. Work hard. Try. You know, there are some tips we can use to improve our salat. You know, the most important one, which is the most obvious, is to pray on time. As soon as prayer time approaches, go to your prayer mat. Go to your musalla as our imams describe it. Just a side note, you know, it's, it's mustahab in our homes, in our houses, you know, to, to make a, a specific corner for salat, or a specific room, or a specific area for salat. This is on a side note. So the first tip is to pray on time. I can't just come and pray Salat al-Dawr 10 minutes before Maghrib time and I'm going to expect for my heart to be present at the Salat. That's not how it works. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says, أُوسِيكُمْ بِتَقْوَى اللَّهِ وَبِرِّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالصَّلَاةِ فِي وَقْتِ The Prophet tells us to fear Allah and respect our parents and pray on time. The first tip is to pray on time. 
The second is the nawafil prayers. We talked about yesterday, 34 mustahab prayers. It's a great way to prepare us for salat, pre-salat. You know, usually when you go to a restaurant, in the menu, you have appetizers, right? Which usually come before the food, to fill you up a bit. Now, I feel like the exact same. They fill you up with spirituality before Salat. So it starts building up that spirituality. So when Salat time comes, you feel that spirituality at its climax. Now, I feel must have had prayers. Even if you can't pray them all, pray, pray some of them. Pray two rak'ahs. You don't have to pray the eight. Pray two. Before Salat al for example. So that's another way. Another way is trying to refrain from such places that may distract you. Because when you're praying and you see something, for instance, if you're praying in a room and there's a TV, you're going to get distracted. Imam Khomeini, may Allah bless his soul, in his book, Al Adab al Ma'nawiyya al Salat, which is a very beautiful book, it's translated in English for those who, know, who want to read it. It talks about the importance of Salat, the different levels of Salat, how we can concentrate in our Salat. And when he talks about how to acquire the presence of the heart during Salat, he says, Pray in an isolated area, if that helps you. In a dark place, if it helps you. He says that Shahid al-Thani, one of our great ulama, known in, for his books in Fuqah, he quotes that some ulama, some mystics, said that they used to worship and perform the salat in a small dark room, barely large enough for them to perform worship. So, the third tip is to pray in a place where we're not distracted, where there's nothing around us that can distract us. The fourth is trying to understand the meanings of the words while we pray. It's not just words being said, it's not just it. Try to understand the words. Try to understand the meanings. Understand what you're reciting. Try to think of the words. You know, these words have magnificent meanings. Surah Al Fatiha alone, if you see how much tafsir our ulama wrote just about Surah Al Fatiha, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And it's a surah we read every day. It'd be good to take a look on its tafsir, the meanings of some words in it. So that's number four, understanding the meanings. Number five is similar to number three. Try to refrain from what distracts you, other than the, the place that distracts you. And I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, when you want to meet someone important, let's say you have a job interview or something. When you usually go, you're usually sitting with the person interviewing you, the manager, whoever it is, you don't usually put your phone away. You know, nothing's distracting you. You're looking at him and stuff. How come sometimes when it comes to Salat, you know, our, our phones are old beside us? In front of us, even even if it's on silent or if, it, if it's on vibrate, you're gonna get it. It's, it's gonna vibrate, and you're gonna think who's messaging me. It's my mom calling me to come and have dinner. You know, I've I've seen brothers that literally they, they got a text message. <laughs> they were they were replying while they're praying. What's up? You never answered the call, no. He's just answering. I'm, I, 
It's texting. It's only texting. And I never talked, so it's okay. I've seen brothers that did that. So try to put it aside, put our phones aside. That's another tip. Number six is take your time in Salah. Why rush? <coughs> Why rush? <coughs> There's no need to rush. No, it's, it's, it's only five minutes. You can't give five minutes to Allah to pray. So take your time in your salah. There's no need to rush. That is another tip. Salah on Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So brothers and sisters, if we can give half an hour of our time to pray to me. Today's 24 hours. We can't give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at least half an hour to pray. Which is, of course, for our benefit. For our gain, we're the one gaining in the end. We're the one gaining in the end. It's not Allah, it's us. Another thing that I would like to that would I, I would like to talk about as well is Salat al-Jama'ah on the side. You know it's so important, brothers and sisters, to pray Salat al-Jama'ah, even at home with your kids, with your family, with your wife. Pray Salat al-Jama'ah. Our fuqaha say Salat al-Jama'ah can be performed. All, all it needs is two people, so you and your wife, you and your child, you and your friend. It's good to perform Salat al-Jama'ah. The narration says that if ten or more people line up to pray in Jama'ah, then the reward that each of them gets is so much that only Allah knows how much it is. The angels can't count it anymore. So why miss out Salat al-Jama'ah? When we're at the mosque, don't pray alone. Pray Salat al-Jama'ah. Imam Hussain, salam Allah alayhi, in Karbala, while the battle was taking place, he told his soldiers that Salat time has approached. No, stop. We have to pray. They looked at the Imam, salam Allah alayhi. Well, what do you mean? We're in the middle of a battle and you're telling us to stop to pray. What does the Imam reply to them? Beautifully. He says, Why are we fighting them? Isn't it to keep the religion of Islam alive? The religion of the Prophet, peace be upon him? And isn't Salat the main pillar of our religion? This is in Karbala. صلى الله محمد وعلي محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلي محمد. So why is it that everything in this dunya could be our drug, could be our addiction, could be something we get excited about when it, but when it comes to salat we feel embarrassed and lazy. When we go out as a group of Muslims, why can't it be that we leave the house? after Salat, or at least know we have a place to pray wherever we're going. Just like Imam Hussain, Salam Allah Alayhi, stopped in the middle of the scorching heat. In the terrible atmosphere, with arrows being hit on him, while he was praying. You know, brothers and sisters, we have to put in some effort. Try. Try. Aim high. We've mentioned this many times. Aim high. Have high goals. This is the only time of the day in which you stand between your Creator, your Master, and tell Him, Thank you. And tell Him you are sorry. And tell him how amazing his creation is. This one time of the day 
where you let Allah know that nothing is more important than you. Because you stopped eating, you stopped thinking, you stopped moving, you stopped talking. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't asking us much. When we claim we love our Imam, salam Allah alayhi, You know, we always say, Ya laytana kunna ma'akum fa nafuza fawzan azimah. We wish we were with you, Ya Aba Abdullah, and we would have been indeed victorious. But if we can't sacrifice time for prayer, for Allah, how will we sacrifice our lives for Ali Abdullah? Sayyidina if we do not pray, if we, do, if we do not teach our kids at a young age how to get into the habit of prayer and how to even acknowledge that salat is obligatory, how will we, how will we be able to sacrifice our lives for our Imam? Yet look at the sons of Zainab. Aoun and Muhammad, one roughly at the age of 10 and the other at the age of 13, standing in the desert by their uncle. Ready to give, to give up their lives for Abi Abdullah and Hussein. Give up this dunya that sometimes we're so attached to. Tonight is the, sun, is the night of the sons of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam. It is said that just before Imam Hussein salam Allah alayhi started his journey from Mecca, Abdullah ibn Jafar, the husband of Sayyidah Zainab alayhi salam, brought his two sons to Mecca and handed them over to Imam Hussein. He said, O oh, Imam, since you have decided to go and will not allow me to come with you, Please take my two sons with you. An will represent his grandfather Ali, and Muhammad will represent his grandfather Jafar. And you want to say the Zainab alayhi salam, and he said, "I have brought you our sons to go in the time of in the time of difficulty for Maulana Abi Abdullah al Hussein." Give one son as a sadaqah from your side and the other as a sadaqah from my side. Aoun and Muhammad were quite young, but they learned how to fight from their uncle Abu Fadl al Abbas. On the night before Ashura, Sayyidah Zainab said to them, My sons, tomorrow there will be a battle. cannot ask you to fight because you are young. But if anything happens to Imam Hussein while you are still alive, I will be filled with shame. Allah. Allah. Say the Zainab will feel ashamed from her brother Ali Abdullah. The boys then stood up and said, Mother, we have the blood of Ali and Jafar in our things. Our grandfathers were warriors whose fame will always be remembered. You think we can possibly shame them? These are little kids talking. Moreover, we are the students of our uncle Abbas. All we want from you is a promise that you will never weep for us. Our souls will never rest in peace if you grieve for us after we are gone. Tears of joy and pride 
Both down and Sayyidah Zainab salam's eyes as she embraced, embraced her two boys. On the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein Salamullah alayhi was losing his men and his soldiers. They were getting martyred one after the other. Aun and Muhammad go to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and ask him for permission to fight. Imam Hussein Salamullah alayhi wouldn't give permission to the boys. They were very disappointed. They went to their mother for help. Sayyidah Zainab sent someone to request that Imam Hussein would come to her tent. When the Imam came, Sayyidah Zainab said, Hussein, at the battle of Safin, Abbas was only eight years old. When he saw someone trying to attack you, he rushed into the battlefield and killed the man. Do you remember how proud your father Ali was? Today I want to be proud of my sons, Ya Aba Abdullah. I want to see them go out there and defend you and defend Islam. Will you not allow me that privilege, Ya Aba Abdullah? Ya Hussein? Imam Hussein said, I stood there in silence. He looked at his sister. He saw how disappointed Sayyidah Zainab was. He saw tears forming around her eyes. He put his arms around the two boys and led them to their horses. He kissed them and then helped them mount. He said, Go and show the world who those young children are. Show them that you can fight the injustice and oppression of Yazid. Then they want one after the other. Aoun went out before Muhammad. He ran to the battlefield and began fighting the enemies and saying, Ashku so bravely and asked who is this young man I see him I see him fighting like Amir al-Mu'mineen when he was told who this little boy was he ordered his soldiers to surround him and kill him they surrounded out but he kept fighting وأردى منهم جمعا ثم تعاطفوا عليه فقتله عامر بن نجل التمري They surrounded the Aun until Umar ibn Nashal al-Tamri strikes Aun until he kills him Ya Zainab, Ya Zainab, they killed your son Aun After that Muhammad goes to the battlefield and runs towards the enemies of Allah He says, إِن تُنْكِرُونِي فَأَنَا بْنُ جَعْفَانِ شهيد صدق في الجنان أزهار يطير في غب جناح أخضايا كفى بهذا شرفا في المحشر محمد fights them till the best of his ability until they overpower him and hit him and he falls on the ground سعد الله قلب العقيل الزينة May Allah be with Zainab alayhi salam. She lost both her sons in Karbala. Imam Hussein and Abu Fadl al-Abbas carried the two young bodies to the tent and laid them on the floor. Imam walked to Zainab salamullahi alayhi salam. He found her in sujood, praying salamullahi alayhi 
Oh Allah, I thank you for accepting my sacrifice. My heart is filled with pride because my two sons have given their lives for your religion. Salamullah alayhi Allah Akbar, the patience of Zainab alayhi salam. After all what has happened to her in Karbala and she remained patient and strong. The poet describes the patience of Zainab salamullah alayha. He says, Salam on the other little girl, little she saw the body of Abi Abdullah with no kiffin three days on the sands of Karbala and remained patient. Zainab has seen many tragedies in her life but Karbala was the greatest tragedy she has seen. Oh Allah, be a shahidat, mahna, rahiba, wa khaha shabita, bittam khadiba. Wa khaha shabita, Let us all send our salams to Abi Abdullah Al Hussein together. The souls of all our dead ones in our Wahamatina Jamia, please recite Surat Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha, but before it's allowed, Salawat Allah Muhammad Wa Ali Muhammad.